Hey guys, on this one, we're gonna have to draw the picture. I tried to draw it, drawing a spring in Corel is not an easy task, so. So let's go ahead and draw this picture out first and then we'll go over it. So we're gonna have this rod, looks like that. And we're gonna have a slider on here. All right, so here's our slider right there. And this thing can slide up and down on this rod. Now at the bottom of this rod, there's going to be a spring. All right, so there's our spring and then there's the base. All right, so it's fixed here and here and we've got this spring. This is at a 60 degree angle and we start up here at A and we end up at B, which is down here. And the distance from the bottom of this slider to the top of this spring is going to be 0.5 meters, all right? And my spring constant, which is up here, is 1.6 kilonewtons per meter. All right, we've got that. And then as the slider slides along this rod, there's gonna be friction. So our coefficient of friction is 0.4. Okay, so we've got that. So that's what our picture looks like. Now let's see what we're wanting to do. The slider is going to be starting at rest at A, and then after it's released, it slides down the rod until it hits this spring at B. All right, now the slider has a mass of two kilograms. We wanna know the slider's velocity when it strikes the spring, and then we wanna figure out how much deflection we have in the spring. So how much does the spring go down once the mass hits it? That's what we want to look for. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First things first, free body diagram every time. All right, so there's the slider. Now, again, always a good idea to label your coordinate system. So I'm going to say this is X, that's Y. Now our forces, we're going to have mass times gravity for weight. And I'm sliding down this rod. I already know I have friction, right? So if I'm going down this rod, I've got friction going up like that. And we know that that is going to be the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So I got 0.4 times N. And then the normal force, well, just by gravity, this is going to Kind of pull down, so the normal force is going to go up like that. So now we have this, and this angle is 60 degrees. So that's our free body diagram. Now what we need to do is find the velocity when we hit B. So we're going to start out by looking at our Y equation. Okay, so let's see what we get from that. So the sum of the forces in the y direction, this is the y direction. I've got this normal force, it's positive direction. And then I've got a component due to the weight, which is going to be a negative. So we're gonna have negative m times g, so that's two times 9.81 times cosine 60. And now there's no acceleration in that direction. Right, so that's gonna be zero, because we're not moving in the y direction. Everything is in the x direction. So that equals zero. And then in, once you solve, you get 9.81, and that's Newtons. Now we've got that. Now we need something else to find velocity, All right? So what we're gonna use is we'll use our work energy relationships, okay? So I wanna look for the forces that have work, or that produce work. Now remember, in order to have work, you've got to have a displacement in that direction. The only direction we have displacement in is the x uh, direction, right? So let's look at that. So the work from A to B. Let's see what it is. So in the x direction, what forces do we got? We got this friction and then we have the weight, okay? 
So for the friction, let's do the, actually let's do friction last because it'll be negative. Let's go ahead and do weight. So for this one, our force is going to be two times 9.81 times sine 60. So that's the force. Then we need the displacement in that direction. So the displacement in the x direction is 0.5. All right, this is positive because it's in my positive x axis. That's the direction we are traveling. Now the other one for friction, our force is 0.4 times n. Well, n is 9.81. I'll put the sign in just a second. So I have 0.4 times 9.81. Now we need the distance we traveled in the x direction again. Well, we already know that's the 0.5. So you have that. Now our sign convention is we're going to be negative if we're in the direction opposite of displacement. All right, so I'm moving down the rod. Friction's going up, so this is opposite, so it's negative. Okay, now that equals 6.534. So we've got that. Now I still need to find velocity. I don't have velocity anywhere yet. Well, what about this equation? Remember u is equal to delta t? t had velocity in it, right? So let's use that. So we're going to say 6.534 is equal to 1 half. And then we're going to have the mass, which is 2 times the final velocity, which will be VB, square that, minus your initial velocity squared. All right, this one goes to zero. So now you're able to find VB, which is 2.56 meters per second. All right, so that's how you go about doing that one. So the key to the work equation here is you got to find the components of force that are in the direction of motion. If there is no displacement in the direction of the force, there is no work done. All right, so that's why this in right here, we didn't have a work equation for that because we're not moving in this direction. All right, so that takes care of part A. Part B, we want to find the max deflection x. So that's basically how far down the spring gets pushed once that mass hits it. All right, so for this one, we're going to still use that equation right there. All right, all we're going to do though is change our value we had for the displacement. So this will be an easy way to do it. All right, so we're going to have two times the 9.81 sine 60. Now our distance is going to be 0.5 plus x, right? Because the spring's going to get pushed down, so the amount it's pushed down is that x. And then we'll have minus 0.4 times 9.81 times the 0.5 plus x. And now are we done? Or should we add something to that? Well, if we're pushing that spring down, the spring has a force, right? And there's a displacement in the same direction as that spring force, so there is work. And we already derived the equation for work due to a spring, and that was the 1 half kx squared, so that's what we're going to use. So the displacement and the force are in opposite directions, so we put a negative, and we're going to have 1 half, whoops, it's a 2 there, doesn't look like it, but that's a 1 half times 1600, so that's the 1.6 kilonewton per meter, switched over to just newton per meter, times x squared. That equals zero. It equals zero because I'm starting with a velocity or a speed of zero, and I'm ending up at zero. Let's make that note. Okay, so now we've got that. 
then again, it might be helpful to draw a free body diagram. So if we draw a diagram, let's just go ahead and do that. We'll have those two. We've got this friction still. And now this is going to be after you hit the spring. So once you hit the spring, you compress the spring. That spring pushes back. All right. So it's going up this way. Our displacement is in the opposite direction. So we have this negative. Okay. And this is the equation for work due to a spring. All right, so now we've got that. Let's go ahead and simplify this down. You'll get 800x squared minus 13.07x minus 6.53 equals 0. So now you can just solve for x. You want to pick the one that is the positive value. So you get 0 0.0989m for meters. All right. So this is how far the spring is going to be compressed. Right? And eventually that spring will push the mass back up. But, but this is how far down it goes until the velocity hits or the speed gets to zero. All right, guys, that's it for that one. I will see you all in the next video. You'll have a great afternoon.